Hello everyone, my name is Chai Hong from Malaysia. First of all, I'd like to thank the AOCMP organizer as well as the organizer of this symposium, Professor Eva Bezak and Professor Hassin Anupama for giving me this opportunity to share my talk. The topics that I would like to share today is Women Entrepreneurships in Medical Physics. I'll start with this popular quote from Cheryl Sandberg. Cheryl is the current COO of Meta Platforms, or formerly known as Facebook. She is a very powerful woman and she is a billionaire herself. In fact, she was named the top 100 most influential persons in the world in 2012 by Time 100. And in 2014, Cheryl founded a, pro, a pro campaign known as Ben Bossy, which is a television and social media campaign to uh, discourage the word bossy from general use due to its perceived harmful effects on young girls. Cheryl said, I want every little girl who's told she's bossy to be told instead she has leadership skills. According to Cheryl, while men are continually applauded for being ambitious and powerful and successful, women who display these same tricks often pay a social penalty or told that they are too aggressive. In another word, in another word too bossy. Gender bias is not new, but more often the biases are engendered by the women themselves primarily due to the lack of confidence and the culture of self-sacrificing for family or the loved ones. Well, today I'm not going to discuss about gender biases. In fact, I would like to share my very brief experience as a very beginner in entrepreneurship. I'm very pleased to announce that on 9 September 2020, last year, me and my partner, who is also my mentor, has founded a company named IOMET Sandrian Brahat. IOMET stands for Intelligent Operative Medical Devices. It started as a university spin-off, but finally, with the university's permission, we have registered the company as a private company in Malaysia. This is our company's slogan. It's a very simple slogan, Simpler, Better, Every Day, where we design, develop, and manufacture niche medical devices to enhance the performance of the everyday common medical procedures, focusing on better outcomes and comfort for our patients and physicians. We hold on to our company philosophy where the devices may be small, but their impacts can be huge. I'll just show you briefly what our company products are. These are some examples. These are very small devices. Uh, they are designed and can be used to solve the existing healthcare problems. These uh, devices are not currently in the market yet because we are still undergoing multiple certification process such as the ISO certification and medical device registration. As I mentioned, uh, we do not use or we do not have heavy machineries. These are the facilities that we currently have in our rented office. Basically, we are using uh, additive manufacturing or 3D printing technologies to design and customize some innovative medical devices used to solve some existing healthcare problems. And due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we took the opportunity to venture into the UVC disinfection technology. We imported the UVC lamps from Poland and currently we have marketed these four systems via our company. Heliprotect, which is a total room disinfection using UVC technology. Heliport is a portable UVC disinfection system. HeliFlow for air disinfection and HeliPrecise, which is our proprietary software for simulation and dose calculations. And I have to mention that we stand firm on our company uh, principle, which is to give back to the society. We aim to utilize about 10% of our annual profit to support charitable activities in our community. For example, this year, we have donated a UVC disinfection system to a CT scanner room of a hospital where I was working before. The room is designated to scan COVID-19 patients. 
We even designed a portable handheld UVC disinfection system to disinfect the inner gantry of the uh, CT scanner. And we also sponsored uh, one of the events, Medical Physics and Biomedical Engineer Seminar, organized by a local uh, hospitals in October this year. Well, at the personal level, you may ask me, what's the motivation for me to jump from an academy staff to the business world? Well, I will say that I jump from one career to another. I'm still doing teaching at the moment. I'm still holding my full-time uh, position in the university. I'm still doing the research that I was doing before. But with the permission from the university, I now got the opportunities to commercialize my research product, which exactly fulfilling the target outcome of the entrepreneurship programs in most universities. So what are the differences between university and the business world? This is by Vedovello in 1998. He categorized it to different aspects. In terms of R&D, in university, we are basically doing a mostly basic research and curiosity oriented. Whereas in business, still running R&D, but mostly are applied research and experimental base. The basic rationale behind university is at once knowledge, whereas behind business is always about profit and increased efficiency. Characteristics in university is idea-centered, whereas in business is more practical and product-centered. The framework university implement open framework in business is close and confidential. Evaluations in the university are done by peers and in business is done purely or solely by the boss. Schedule university is open-ended, whereas in business is very tight and usually is predetermined you have a target to, to hit. Recognition in university is scientific uh, Honors is based on scientific honors, whereas in business world is reviewed by your salary increment. And this is where I would consider my current positions. I, cons I consider myself as an academic entrepreneur, where my task is to connect the academic responsibilities with entrepreneurship. And hopefully by doing so, I can encourage more researchers in the universities to commercialize their products so that it can benefit more people in the society. So what exactly is entrepreneurship? It's basically building something from nothing. And in entrepreneurship, the initial step is the most important, planning. And you must have a very strong foundation, a very practical business plan. Once you have the plan, the next action is just do it and you have to do it fast and you have to do it again and do it again and do it again until you reach your goals. There is nowhere for you to give up halfway after you begin. And why? Why we enter into entrepreneurship? There could be three reasons. Either you want to build something just for your own interest, like myself. <laughs> or you, you really want to earn the profit, or some, some people, they cannot be the employees, they must call the shots, or they must be the boss themselves. Okay. But one constant thing in entrepreneurship is finding ideas and continuously finding ideas to sustain a business. And after I've been through the journey, and after I read up a lot about entrepreneurship, I now uh, can really understand the importance behind entrepreneurship. It's not just about money. They, are, they play a very important role in the society, such as to stimulate demands in wider economy, to nurture creativity, productivity and innovation, create more job opportunities, to develop community, the ripple effect, to make social change or to enhance the standard of living, promotes research and development and political and economic integrations of outsiders. And what are the challenges? It's everything. It's from financing to team building human resource, being visionary, dealing with the unknowns, 
loneliness, decision making, rule making, and basically you have to do everything by your own alone. Any barriers? Of course, there are a lot. Uh, it could be environmental barriers or personal barriers. Environmental barriers such as non-availability of raw materials, lack of skilled labor, lack of good machinery, lack of infrastructures, lack of funds, or other environmental barriers, such as the COVID-19 pandemic. While most of the environmental barriers are out of our control, but personal barriers are uh, mostly within our capability to change. For example, unwilling to invest money, lack of confidence, lack of motivation, lack of patience, and inability to dream. So let's discuss about women versus men entrepreneurs. Are there any difference? Okay. Women entrepreneurs, women can be a superwoman. <laughs> We, we can play multiple, we can hold multiple um, roles, okay? As a mother, as a spouse, daughter, your own or personal health management, societal expectation duties, risk-taking innovator, creative employer. And you are entrepreneur yourself, but you still have to do housekeeping or sometimes caretaker of dependents. What about men? In my personal opinion, there is no difference. Man is also a son and a father themselves. They are also holding all these responsibilities, nothing less than a woman. This is an interesting findings from a survey done in London among women and men entrepreneurs. Balancing work and home life is not solely a female issue and also has an impact on the male entrepreneurs. The impact on male entrepreneurs is often overlooked. Female entrepreneurs usually encounter the biological bind. This is one area where women remain particularly disadvantaged. The biological bind includes, uh, for example, our money measures, which could be quite um, mentally and physically disturbing, as well as the nature of being a woman um, who are more caring, I would say, and more emotionally attached to people compared to men. How to be successful as a woman in business? These are some tips given by the Women in Business Foundation, which I do agree a lot. I read it slow here. Uh, I hope you can understand each message behind. First, set goal. Believe in yourself. Avoid negative people. Stop fearing failures. Initiate on your own. Don't rely on anyone else. Grow your network and use your time effectively. And what are the skills needed to be an entrepreneur? There are many, many, many skills that you need to excel in to run a successful business. But in my own opinion, these are the three fundamental personalities that you must have to be success. Patience, patience and perseverance. And I would add another three characteristics. Be honest, sincere and faithful in everything you do at all time. Most people will only see your success, but most people don't see the hard work or the failures that you have actually dedicated in. This is so-called the iceberg illusion. And more than 50% of small enterprises fail in the very first year, and more than 95% small startups fail within the first five years. And in theory, we know that there are a lot of um, training courses, hands-on courses, uh, even the university programs to teach us how to do a startup. But in reality, 
I would say the process is like this. And it could be worse than what you can imagine. After all, I realize success is simply a matter of luck. Ask any failure. Some people might disagree with this quote, but it has been proven very true in the business world. But I will add another condition, which is luck occurs when preparation meets opportunity. And the priority matrix, also called the Eisenhower matrix. I know about this matrix since many years ago, but now I'm really practicing it. I'm using it every day for every task that I do. Because all of us has a constraint of time. We cannot do everything we want all the time. We have to evaluate every single task to know its priority and decide what actions to take. For example, high importance, high urgency matter, you must do it first. High importance, low urgency, do it next. Low importance, high urgency, do later. For low importance, low urgency, you might not need to do it. I like this quote a lot from Oprah Winfrey. Don't worry about being successful, but work towards being significant and the success will naturally follow. We can apply this in the business world. Don't worry about making money, but work towards making a difference and the success will naturally follow. And finally, this is my own philosophy. Every day, I'm reminding myself, life is short. Live with patience, kindness, and sincerity. And don't be afraid. Just follow your heart. Your heart will lead you the way. Thank you very much for listening.